Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Clippers, right? And uh, the, the Dallas Mavericks facing off for the third time, um, I think since 2020. Since 2020, I think they played in 2020, 2021, and now 2024, right? Um, and it's something that's, you know, that I'm very interested in because my favorite player player is going to be playing uh, in that series. Now, the Clippers have had a pretty interesting season. Uh, when, you know, the moment they pulled off the James Harden trade, there was a lot of turbulence. They had lost, I think they lost six games in a row, five with him. And then they went on this 29 and like five tear or 31 or 31 and six tear or something like that, where they were looking like clearly the best team in the NBA without a shot of a doubt. <clears throat> and at that time, a lot of people were picking them to be the real threat to the Denver Nuggets in the Western Conference. People like Kendrick Perkins and Stephen A. Smith. But after the All-Star break, the Clippers lost a lot of their mojo. They lost a lot of their momentum. They weren't playing the same way. And then they started dealing a little bit with the injury bug with Paul George and now Kawhi Leonard. So a lot of people have kind of cooled off on the Clippers, which, by the way, is totally, totally understandable. So what happened? Um, we now know that the Clippers are going to be facing the Dallas Mavericks uh, in round one as the four versus five matchup. And is going to be starting with the Clippers. Um, so they were discussing this yesterday on ESPN with Kendrick Perkins and Stephen A. Smith. And to my surprise, both Kendrick Perkins and Stephen A. Smith decided to totally jump ship and abandon the Clippers and say they don't really believe that they can, they, they can come out of this series. So for those of you who didn't hear that, I want to play for you now and I'm going to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to these gentlemen here. Who are you giving the edge in this series? I would love to tell you the Los Angeles Clippers because I've had so many expectations for them. But you're asking me to believe that Kawhi Leonard is healthy. And you're also asking me to believe that I should have no concerns whatsoever that James Harden is going to answer the call. Obviously, if both things are true, the Clippers should win this series. But what we've seen from the Dallas Mavericks is something special. Uh, Luka Doncic is a league MVP candidate, averaging nearly a triple-double at 34 points with 9-9 nine and nine in assist and rebounds, over 9. Then you've got Kyrie Irving, who, as far as I'm concerned, is a I got a comeback player of the year because Lord knows he got into some stuff last year and he was been distracted over the last few years. And for him to be on the court this year doing what he has been doing, he has been nothing short of spectacular. And then before the trading deadline, and Gaffey and these brothers, I'm just looking at the Dallas Mavericks right now, and I just think the, the momentum that they have, the way that they've been flowing, mm. it's pretty difficult to bet against them this early, and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell you right now, I think, I think that Dallas is going to win this series. And I'm rolling with you. They look more like a team. a team. When we talk about Luka, I always said this, he's the most dangerous player in the Western Conference outside of Jokic. We haven't seen Kyrie Irving play with this much joy since Moby Dick was a goldfish. <laughs> since Moby, he's, I didn't he's, know Moby he, Dick was a goldfish. He's playing with joy, but then you look at the other pieces. We're looking at P.J. Washington, what he's doing, bringing to the table, looking like a 3 and D guy. We're looking at Gafford, Gafford. being a live threat at the basket, yep. lively coming in off the bench. Tim Hardaway getting back healthy. Mm. They look well coached, and they look well locked I'm in. glad you said that. Perfect six, six. Way. <laughs> So you heard what those gentlemen had to say. Now, the Clippers have faced the Mavericks three times this season. In those three victories, uh, they beat them um, one, two, two times, right? And the Mavs won the matchup in November. Now, what's important to point out is that uh, the Mavericks did have an upgrade to their roster uh, after the after the trade deadline. So now their roster, I'm just going off of uh, CBS Sports, uh, is comprised of Tim Hardaway Jr., Josh Green, uh, Luka Doncic, of course, Kyrie Irving, Derek Jones uh, Jr., uh, Markeith Morris, Dwight Powell, P.J. Washington. Uh, there's another player. I just want to make sure I get his name right because I know the dude. Uh, he was a former Boston Celtic. I forgot his name. He's a defensive uh, specialist. I cannot find him right now for whatever reason. Uh, they're not showing his name, but y'all y'all know who I'm talking about. I think is a... Uh, I think it's Derek White. I'm trying to find his name right now, but he's there. 
Uh, he's a defensive specialist guy. He's a strong guy, you know, big body. I'm just trying to see if I can. Yeah, there. I can't. Yeah, for whatever reason, I'm not seeing him. Unless they got rid of him, I can't see him on ESPN.com and all of that. But anyway, I think he's playing uh, with the Mavs, but I can't see him right now. But anyway, they got some very good players, right? And they upgraded their roster, which means that their defense also got enhanced. So a lot of people are saying, listen, the team that the Clippers beat uh, is a different team, not this Dallas Mavericks team who has been on a tear, uh, who has been winning a lot of their games going into you know the end of uh, the regular season on the the other hand of the Clippers, they haven't really had such a good uh, final stretch. They're barely a 500 team and Kawhi Leonard has missed. I don't know. He's missed a lot of games, like at least seven, eight games. Uh, so you have that situation there. Now, that's what we know about the rosters. There's also something else which we need to deal with, which is the perception of what's going to happen. Now, most people that you speak to or a good amount of the people that you speak to are going to are going to are saying that Luka Doncic is going to torch the hell out of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. I beg to differ. Uh, as someone that has seen every series that these two guys have gone against each other, Luca just essentially keeps spamming screens until he gets his favorable matchup. Historically, he would look for Vitsa Zubak or he would look for uh, Patrick Beverly. This year, what's going to happen is he's going to look for James Harden and he's going to look for Zubak, which is going to then force the hand of Ty Lue to go small. And then that's when we really start getting into the X's and O's. He's not going to see Kawhi Leonard. How do I know this? Because uh, we just want to show you a quick graphic. Uh, in the games in which uh, Luka Doncic was def uh, defended by Kawhi Leonard, uh, he, in 65 possessions, he scored 22 points on 37.5% uh, shooting and 30.8% shooting from the three. That was the last time they faced each other. While Kawhi Leonard on 35 possessions when he was defended by Luka scored 19, shot 50% from the field uh, and 50% from the three. Also something worth noting, uh, Luka Doncic has a 12-19 and 19 record against the LA Clippers, including getting eliminated from the playoffs twice. His 19 losses against the Clippers are the most against any opponent uh, in his career. Now, what are my thoughts going into this series? First thing I'm going to address, because I know we got a lot of cornballs in, in, the, in the comment section and the weebs. What's going to happen is the following. Of course, I got my haters out there. They weigh in. If the Clippers lose, they're going to be like, oh, you, you said they're going to win. You're going to win. They're gonna win. But these jokers, I'm talking about Stephen A. Smith and Kendrick Perkins, they get to pick them and then change their mind and they don't get no smoke. That's the first thing I just wanted to point out, just to show you guys that. In terms of this series, the number one thing I'm most concerned about is not Luka Doncic. The number one thing I'm most most concerned about is Kawhi's availability. That is it. I'm not, I'm not focusing too much on Luka. Uh, if Kawhi is going to be healthy, I haven't seen him play. I suspect he's going to play because now he'll probably have three weeks off the rest. His sore knee or knee inflammation, I don't know what it is. Uh, then I'm cool. Let the chips fall where they may. Um, I was listening to the Clippers assistant head coach yesterday after the loss. Yeah, it was yesterday, and the Clippers, for whatever reason, seem so ready to, f to face the with the to face the Mavericks. They just seem so eager. They like they really wanted that force. I'm like, you know, you're gonna face the Mavericks, and they just don't really seem to care. It's like they want to face this team. So. Folks, it looks like the playoffs are finally here and I am super duper excited. I cannot even wait. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, but who knows? Maybe in a week from now, if my team loses or two weeks from now, it won't be any fun to me, but I can't wait for it, man. We got the playing tournament starting uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be talking about that. And of course, as we build up to the playoffs and all of that, we got a lot of stuff uh, planned for you guys uh, doing lives and all of that, getting back to that playoff grind, which is always a lot of fun, especially <clears throat> in the first round, which is where the most action usually takes uh place so this weekend i actually spent i had some family time and uh spent it with my family my dad and all of them met my daughter and all of that so it was, it was a lot of fun so i didn't really do any work but i knew that there was some some very important games being played on uh sunday right some very important games to still decide seating because up until that point the only teams that we knew <clears throat> that were going to be facing each other were the clippers and the mavs but the seating in terms of who's playing who, who was a four or the five, wasn't determined uh, as of yet, right? So Sunday, I knew there was a lot of games uh, that were taking place where my daughter was like, you're not watching any of them. You're going to walk around and carry me everywhere that I that, that I decide. And if you dare stop, if you dare stop for even three seconds, I'm going I'm to a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a elbow you in the side of your head. So I had no chance to do that. But as I woke up this morning, no, 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 no. Before I went to bed, I started to see some of the results because I have the NBA app 
uh, and I was seeing some results. So I said, okay, I got to start posting some of these polls to get people ready uh, for what's happening. So as I looked at the polls, um, I saw something interesting, and we're going to put it up for you right now, the playoff picture. I saw the playoff play in uh, tournament, and I saw that the Lakers were able to secure the eighth seed to be playing the, what is it, uh, the, the, the New Orleans Pelicans for the seventh seed. And I was like, okay. And then I looked further at the standings. And I'm like, hold on, who's the second seed? Because I thought Denver was the number one seed. But apparently Denver dropped from the number one to the number two and OKC moved up, which means that the Denver Nuggets then became the second seed. And the Lakers could potentially end up being the seventh seed to face the Denver Nuggets <clears throat> in round one of the playoffs. And I was like, nah, I got to put up a poll about this to get people's thoughts and feelings. And as I was going through various things, I then thought to myself, and I remember Shannon Sharp. Now, why did I remember Shannon Sharp? As you guys know, Shannon Sharp, huge LeBron James proponent, supports the Lakers. Uh, and he feels like they have what it takes to do well in these playoffs. But Shannon has always said that the one team he hopes the Lakers uh, don't face early in the playoffs is the Denver Nuggets. So what we want to do is want to quickly play what Shannon Sharp had to say on the ESPN first take about the potential of the Lakers facing the Nuggets. And then we're going to come back and really get into the show. Take a listen to what Shannon had to say here. Shay, I want to start with you. So your Lakers currently ninth in the West. Do you think they're the biggest threat to the Nuggets in the conference? I don't, as much as I like to say they are. Um, what? I almost it, fell it, out of my chair. I no, almost you know just what? fell out of my chair, Shannon. It's, oh, dependent, on one, it's a dependent on one thing. Is Carl Anthony Towns come, coming back? If he comes back, I believe they would be the biggest threat because they have a guy in Anthony, uh, Anthony, they, they, Ant -Man, Anthony Edwards that can close the show. They have another big that can go give you 20 on a nightly basis. And I think, now look, Gobert is not going to stop. But I think with that size, they could bother uh, uh, Jokic. Now, the thing is, look, we've seen them, Stephen A. We've seen them go to Milwaukee and beat the Bucks. We've seen them go to uh, Boston and beat Boston without LeBron. And I think Anthony Davis as well. So we know what they're capable of. But I saw them lose to Brooklyn two once with both of those guys in the lineup. So I just don't know what exactly Laker team that I'm going to get. Now, if you say we get – we go. We coming, you know we coming out. A, a legs, you and Stephen, y'all know we coming out to play in, right? If we're in the play, it don't matter. Play in, playoffs, it don't matter. Lakers gonna be in the regular season, gonna be in the regular tournament. You know that, Stephen A. So I, I, so I don't know what you talking about, man. I don't know. You do know, cause Go James is gonna be where it's at. Now, if you tell me, you say now, if we get them guys in the, in the finals, the Western Conference Finals again, I'm gonna slide all my chips to the table. I'm going with Goat James. That's if we get to the Western Conference Finals. I don't want to see them before this, Stephen A. I don't want to see them before this. So can we wait? Can we get a couple of games, a couple of series up on our belt, get our rhythm? And Anthony Davis going to have to start wearing goggles like goggles yeah, like nah. Kareem. So you heard what Shannon Sharp had to say. Before I get into his comments, I want to read some of the things, uh, some of the polls that we put up last night. But let me read the one about the Lakers. <clears throat> We put this up about 13 hours ago. We put up a lot of polls, so people are still catching up. But out of the 1,000 voters, 60%, because I asked who, uh, playoff, play in prediction, who do you have winning this game between the Lakers and the Pelicans? 60% of the people then voted that the Lakers will beat the Pelicans. And I'm amongst the people that believe the Lakers will beat the Pelicans. And then I put up another poll, which was about seven hours ago. I said, should the Lakers lose on purpose to avoid Denver in round one? And of the 1,900 voters that have participated in that poll, 61% of them are saying no, no. And 39% of them are saying uh, yes, the Lakers uh, they find themselves in a very, very interesting predicament. Why? Because <clears throat> if they win the game tonight or tomorrow, uh, depending if they play tomorrow, then they secure their spot into the playoffs. So you're secure. But if you lose, you still have a chance to secure a spot in the playoffs. Uh, but then you put yourself in a situation where you could also lose and not even make the playoffs entirely. But if you make the playoffs, you're going to be playing against a team that has beaten you for nine straight games, including the playoffs. 
So to me, if I'm a Laker fan, if I'm Shannon Sharp, I'm worried. Now, there are some people that believe that the Lakers should go ahead and try to face the Nuggets first. I'm not in that group. And Shannon Sharp is not in that group as well, right? Now, in terms of being a competitor as a professional athlete with LeBron and these guys, I don't see them throwing games. And the reason why I don't see them throwing a the game is because from what I've been hearing from LeBron and these guys, LeBron has been pretty much saying the same thing, which is we don't really care who we face. Let's get into the playoffs and let's see where the chips fall. He also recently said that <clears throat> um, he's not really concerned about. Oh, no, no. He said he also said that he actually feels better going into the playoffs this year uh, than he did last season although last season they made it to the western conference finals i saw like a title on um i think it was fadeaway world where i didn't click on the article but i saw the headline where he was like lebron feels more confident going in uh this time but for a person like shannon sharp man this is a nightmare because denver is the one team you don't want to face but you know they played yesterday they won the game and now they find themselves in a situation where they if they win against the Pelicans, they most likely, no, no, they most likely, they will face the Nuggets. Now, some people have said the Lakers should take their chances with the one seed in Oakley, Oklahoma City Thunder. To that, I say, I understand your reasoning because you're hoping to get, basically, they're hoping that the youth uh, will come back and bite the OKC Thunder. But the Oklahoma City Thunder are a very good basketball team. I've seen them beat the Clippers. They are a very good team, right? So, I don't, I wouldn't say, oh, they're just going to beat them anyway. It could happen, but I, I, I wouldn't just write them off summarily just dismissed them uh, although the lakers have been successful to them successful against them during their regular season but anyway let me get into this topic here this is going to be uh this is going to be a lot of fun why because the playoffs essentially begin this week we're starting with we're starting off with the play-in tournament and then the, the the playoffs themselves kick off on saturday and i just cannot wait I'm, and when I said I just can't wait, I'm talking about the Western Conference uh, matchups. I'm not really interested in any of the. I'm just keeping it funky with you guys. Ain't nothing really going on in the East. Like, I mean, I may watch some Knicks games. I may watch some Knicks games to see how the Knicks are doing. But anyway, last night we finally got uh, the seedings. Uh, and more importantly, we got the seedings for the playing tournament. And it turns out that the Lakers are going to be playing against. <clears throat> the New Orleans Pelicans, who currently sit at the seventh spot for the eighth spot, right? So whoever wins that game, they hold on to the seventh spot, you know, and then whoever wins between the nine and the ten, they play one more to decide who wins the 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 the, the AFC. So the Lakers essentially will have two opportunities uh, to win, and the bottom teams will need two wins to advance. So uh, then I saw that they're going to be facing against the Denver Nuggets, and I immediately put up the following poll about seven hours ago on the channel, and I said, and I and I asked the question to because it, it, seven hours ago, and I said. Should the Lakers lose on purpose to avoid the Denver Nuggets in round one? Of the 2,000 voters, 61% of them said no. The remaining 39 said yes. Let me read some of the commentaries. Uh, some of the things that people said, excuse me. One person said, LeBron don't want none of that with Denver. Um, LeBron avoiding competition, I'm shocked. You want to avoid a do or die game? Uh, that's not a smart move. Another person said, no matter, Lakers ain't winning the title. Let them face Denver in round one uh, and have Denver put them out of their misery. Another person said, just play Denver right now before they catch a rhythm in a couple of series. And it's a sweep again uh, if they meet in the Western Conference final. Another person said, the season is over for the Lakers. Memphis sat 13 players and almost beat LA. I remember that. Uh, don't worry, the NBA officials will make sure of that scenario. <laughs> Um, and, uh, some, some, some people just cracking jokes, uh, you know, let's go referees. Another person said only avoiding the toughest matchup only helps the bench who really need those playoff, uh, checks and people said what they had to say, but these weren't the only group of people that had this to say this morning. I've been like sitting back waiting to hear what the big boys on the bigger shows are going to be saying. And I came across a clip from Get Up with Mike Greenberg, uh, Tim Legler was there. I forgot, I forgot the other gentleman's name. And as they were talking, Mike Greenberg then brings up this very scenario where he was like, I think the Lakers should do whatever it takes to avoid Denver in round one. And I was like, well, I cannot be the only one thinking this. So what we want to do is want to play what Mike Greenberg and the crew had to say about this. And then we're going to come back and react to his comments. Take a listen to what they had to say there. I'm going to say something and duck. 
because I know that it is controversial, and I know that it flies in the face of absolutely everything that the spirit of competition <laughs> was born to create, and you just said, Herman Edwards, you play to win the game. The Lakers should not play tomorrow night. They should not play LeBron. They should not play AD. They do not want to be the seven seed. You want to be the eight. I'm taking my chances in a one and done at home against either Sacramento or Golden State and go in against the very young OKC Thunder in round one instead of going into the buzzsaw that is Denver. I think you were, it is worth the risk. Everything you said is right except for one thing. You put yourself into a one-off situation. Okay, where you lose one game, you're going home for the summer if you lose that second night, right? This is different with the Knicks. You're talking about win or lose to, uh, in terms of your seeding. Right. You still have a best of seven series you're about to go play, right? And event, the better team will win that series. This is different. Like you lose that game intentionally, you put yourself into a situation where you're playing the winner of the 9 10 and anything could happen. If somebody gets hurt, somebody gets in foul trouble, somebody just, D'Angelo Russell goes one for 14. Like there's all, so many things could happen in one game. Yes. And you find yourself going home for the summer. I recognize. So I think that's a little bit more precarious. I recognize the risk, but I think life is about assessing risk mm -hmm. reward. Is it worth that risk? to avoid playing Denver in round one or two. There's no one who can... Look, the, the Nuggets are the one team the Lakers have no chance to beat. Realistically, no chance to beat. And you know who knows that? LeBron James knows that. They got swept by the Nuggets last year. That is a matchup. They are hoping someone else knocks off Denver along the way. To me, Alan, it, I understand the risk. And if you wind up losing at home Friday night to Sacramento or Golden State, you wind up looking terrible. But I think it is a risk worth taking. Our good friend Monica McNutt always does retweet because that's exactly how I felt the minute I saw the way things set up. And you point out that they got swept last year in the Western Conference Finals by them. They don't match up well with them. They haven't beat them in nine games. This goes back to last season. They just cannot beat this team. So you have to look at it in a way, like you're saying, you take a risk on a game. Well, okay. So you win one game to lose the next four. Like, or you lose a game to win a game. And if your season ends there, it was going to end anyway. Like, you need the better matchup in this case. And if you think of it about it from a franchise perspective, the Lakers have a better chance to actually advance in the playoffs by avoiding the Denver Nuggets. Because then you don't have to see them till later. So for me, you look at the Thunder and you don't want to disrespect them. But you gave a stat that was incredible, and that is their age. Yeah. The fact that they are the youngest, number one seed. They have, they have no playoff experience whatsoever, and now they have the weight of expectations as a number one seed. That game one at home, when LeBron comes in with AD, that's going to have a ton of pressure on it. That's the best case situation. Have we won you over? So you heard what he had to say. Listen, um, he makes a good point. He makes a good point. Uh, there's risk all over the place. There's risk all over the place, uh, if we're being honest, because there's a risk of, well, if you throw a game, then you find yourself in a you must win situation to stay in the playoffs. And what if you lose and you go home? And then there's also the other risk of, well, if you win this game, you secured your spot. But now you're at risk of be being beaten by a team that has beat you nine consecutive times uh, in round one, which would be a disaster. But both scenarios would be a disaster. If the Lakers have missed the playoffs, it would be a disaster. They got beat again by the by the Denver Nuggets and don't don't advance. It'd be another disaster. But there's another aspect to all of this, which is: Are we really meant to expect this much from an eighth seed? Because I, at this particular point, I don't even know what to feel about the Lakers in terms of are they good or not, because their record says that they're their eighth seed. But if you listen to what people say, you know what the LeBron has done historically and all of these guys. You will, they will have you thinking that no, uh, this is a really a four, uh, you know, a top four seed in the West. I don't know. Those other teams have had the better record. The 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 Wolves, the um, the Wolves, the 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 Thunder, the Nuggets, and the Clippers. But the Lakers have had a successful season against those teams with their individual matchups. Uh, if I'm the Lakers, I would try to avoid Denver, man. I would try to avoid. They're just the one team you just don't want to face this early. If it was the Clippers, I'd be like, damn, you want to face Denver right now? Because Nikola Jokic, man, yo, whew. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna be going to, you're gonna be going up against the best player in that series by far. They're one of the best teams at closing games by far. Uh, so to me, man, um, if I'm the Lakers, I look to avoid it, right? I look to avoid it. 
um, you know, and, and take my chances with OKC. I would just rather take my chances with OKC and roll the dice there because what we do know for sure is that as of now, the Lakers look like a team that cannot beat the Nuggets. They cannot. Like, they've lost nine straight to them. So all the evidence, I mean, at least you can go against the Thunder and say, well, we won the, the season series against them, so we have some hope. I think the Lakers did. Uh, and, you know, you're going to be playing off of their youth. So I think their chances of advancing is better. And let the Nuggets go face somebody else. I, mean, I think they would end up facing the Pelicans in that particular scenario. Uh, then going up against the Denver Nuggets this early. But some people want it. You know, some people are saying, no, this is something that should happen now. Uh, take your chances and strike while the iron is hot. And maybe you try to catch them off guard. I don't know. I guess we shall wait and see. Uh, we shall see what happens. Shannon Sharp taking shots at Michael Jordan for no damn reason. For no apparent reason. As you guys know, Shannon Sharp makes his appearances on ESPN First Take on Mondays and Tuesdays. So on today's show, given the fact that we're on the heels uh, of the NBA playoffs, you know that we're going to be talking basketball. And you know specifically that we're going to be talking about the Lakers, which means that inevitably they were going to be talking about LeBron James, who Shannon Sharp is a big fan of. So today they were discussing the play in tournament, the play in uh, scenario uh, that the Lakers find this, themselves in because they're going to be facing off against the uh, New Orleans Pelicans for the number seven spot. So in the midst of them talking about this, Shannon Sharp then goes into his normal uh, 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 monologue, which is, you know, and by the way, LeBron did play very well uh, the other night where he had a triple double, but then. You cannot hype up that victory against Memphis. I watched that game. Memphis had no starters. I think that game, they only had eight players. And Lakers still damn near lost that game with some with some, with some freaking frishy uh, no-foul call at the end of the game. But Shannon comes on the show, and he starts talking about how great LeBron James played, which, by the way, I had no issues with because LeBron did play very, very well. But in the midst of all of that, he once again took it upon himself to take another shot at MJ. And the part that gets me is that LeBron fan gets upset. Lef LeBron fans get upset when people take shots at LeBron. But meanwhile, that's all they do with MJ. And MJ never says anything to them. But nevertheless, that did not stop Shannon Sharp. So what we want to do is we want to play what Shannon Sharp had to say on ESPN uh, today. Uh, and then we want to come back, continue on the show. Take a listen to what he had to say here. Shannon, mm -hmm. will LA and Golden State get out of the play-in. What do you think? Yes, uh, I believe they do. Um, the Lakers have looked very, very well the last the last week of the last two weeks of the season. And they've looked really well against the Pelicans. Remember in the play-ins tournament, you thought, not play, excuse me, the end-season tournament, yes. you thought that was an anomaly mm -hmm. when they beat them by 45. Mm -hmm. Had them down by 32 yesterday. Mm -hmm. See, yesterday, LeBron James reminded me of my grandmother on fourth Sunday dinner. She made sure everybody ate first. And then she sat down and got her plate. You see what he did? 13 assists in the first half. Yes. Everybody, hey, Rui, you hungry? Hey, yes. D, you hadn't played. You hadn't played, so I know you hungry. Let me get you going. D-Lo, uh-uh, AR. You know we call him Kobe of the Ozarks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we made sure everybody ate. Right. And then he sat down and had him a big old plate. <laughs> giving it to him. Yeah. And did you see that defense that he put on Zion? Mm -hmm. Did you see that? I said, LeBron. LeBron said, hey, um, should I get him? Should I get him? Mm -hmm. Got him. Did him up. <laughs> Win at him. You saw his legs. Legs. The man had, the, hold on. Please tell me, somebody, that's a faulty birth certificate. You mean to tell me that man at 39 years of age, nah. the final game, 82, he played over 70 games. He gave you 28, 17, and 11? Mm-hmm. Yo goat could never. <laughs> oh, you, bet. you need to stop Yo that nonsense. Could you need to stop that he nonsense. Could never My goat could do whatever he wanted to do. Not he that. did. You understand? Not that. You know, please, yes, he could. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Right. Well, first of all, it was a different era. It's softer. It's considerably softer in today's NBA than it was in the '80s and '90s. You keep forgetting that, but that's a different subject for another day. I love that soliloquy that you just went on, and I'm going to give you your props because. At LeBron James looked like Magic Johnson part duh. You, know, uh, you mean, thought it was something special yesterday. No doubt about it. So you heard what Shannon had to say. He said Michael Jordan could never. Yeah. He could never. Michael Jordan could never find himself in a playing tournament fighting to make the playoffs 
to capture his fifth championship. You know why? Because Jordan won three championship three championships in a row two times. The fact of the matter is this. Um, I'm not buying the argument of, oh, LeBron has played longer, done things longer. I don't think Jordan cared. I think Jordan reached a point where he's like, I've already beat these dudes. I've already accomplished it all. Uh, and if you guys want to talk about the longevity, which you're free to do, then one may need to ask the following question. Well, if LeBron has been, been this good for this long, why hasn't he won more championships or at least equaled uh, Michael Jordan? Because you're going to talk about his impressive play, and it has been impressive. Why hasn't any of that translated into more championships? Jordan won his final championship at 35. This is, by the way, going. This is also, by the way, going to college and taking off, what two years? So Jordan probably played effectively for what 13 seasons. LeBron is going on 20, like his 35th million season. He's going on. So to me, listen, if you say LeBron is having a great year, fantastic. I think he broke the, re the the record for 25 points per game average for over 20 seasons. He has the record. Fantastic. I think those are things that are great for LeBron James and things that uh, basketball fans can celebrate and LeBron James fans can celebrate. That, however, doesn't move the needle for the majority of people when we're talking about MJ. It doesn't really, except for LeBron fans, you know? Except for them. Now, if you want LeBron to be your GOAT, have at it. But to then say he better than Jordan, nah, like, come on, stop. I think they're the only ones that believe that. I was just thinking about this before we produced this show. I was like, you know, LeBron fans are the only ones that really think he's the, he's the GOAT. But other basketball fans from other, the support of the teams or the players can see Jordan, Jordan is the GOAT. And that's the fundamental difference right there. And then you have people in media that are just basically paid plants to go out there and parrot a particular thing because they need a job or something like that. LeBron is having a great year. He's having a great career. But stop with this. All your goal could never. Because then we can start ringing off things that Jordan could do that LeBron couldn't even dream of doing. Like winning a defensive player of the year. Now, Nick Wright will jump up in the back and say, but that year he got right. Yeah, but that he didn't win. You, you, this is what kills me. He counts it like as if almost is like it happened. It didn't happen. What about those 10 scoring titles? What about going 6-0 in the finals? What about having the highest regular season average ever? Having the highest postseason average ever. Like, let's cut. Like, let's stop. Jordan won at every single level he's been. He never even lost at the Olympics. Like, stop. John, LeBron lost and he got the silver medal. Like, stop. Like, enough, like, like, enough with the shots and all of this. Like, Shannon doing that, but he's only, you know, he only got LeBron fans in the corner twerking it up, shaking it up, you know, twerking, all over the twerking it up all over the place, knocking over drinks, slapping each other with honey. These are the only people that are, that are hype about this. He said they were like, oh, he to go and then somebody else jumped in like yo stop that what's wrong with you just put the put the honey down b what's wrong with you no i don't want no honey man people keep asking me where you made that where you got that honey from the honey joke the where i got the honey from is your your, your man your man just now that was talking talking about some damn lebron said if you saw me wrestling with a bear pray for the bear then chain and sharp talking about i'm a poor honey all over you it's like what 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 is going on right now like what what do we what, do we, what are we doing what are we doing man but hey that's your man. But enough with these Jordan shots, man. It's ridiculous. And the part is, Jordan doesn't even say nothing. It must hurt. It's like the dude doesn't even acknowledge these people. But hey, LeBron fans talk about how emotional Jordan fans are. I think LeBron fans are a direct, a direct reflection of LeBron himself. The most emotional dudes in the world. Always crying and hollering about something. You notice that for as much crap that gets talked about Jordan you notice he never makes any public statements or responds to it but on the other hand do you notice that every little thing LeBron James does he's always hollering and fighting with somebody on Twitter or having somebody on his behalf fighting for him or going on this podcast speaking that nonsense or talking about I want my damn respect that's them they follow their leader that's how they are Jordan fans they're not, they're not like that man Kobe fans they're not like that I, I'm talking about as dudes Typically, they're not like that. LeBron fans, they cuss you. They cuss out their own mama over LeBron. I, they will cuss you out, cuss out your family, cuss out your daughter, your kids, whatever, over some damn LeBron. They be getting tight. They be ready to fight. They be ready to run up in Walmart and buy a lot of honey. And they about to go to war for LeBron. Like, yo, whoever whoever, whoever say something crazy, I'm slapping you with a, with, with a handful of honey, son. Like, that, that, that's just how we rolling. And if you talk if you talk crazy, when, you, when I slap you, when you fall on the floor, I'm twerking all over you. 
That's just how I'm doing. That's how just, that's just how I'm giving it up. These twerking ass LeBron fans. I'll catch catch y'all the next episode. Peace, peace, peace.